Dear Lady Love TV Magandang araw. Ngayon ay panibagong kwento ang hatid ng channel na ito na pinamagatang Tadhana, Mukha ng Pag-ibig. Tunghaya na po natin ang unang bahagi. Come on, Trixie. Ang horny mo. Try lang natin. Leia tried for about a hundred times now. Convince me and Maxine to try some tent we passed by kanina while we were roaming around our crowded school grounds. I rolled my eyes, which is my signature reaction to absolutely everything. As they both say, at Leia and her idea while finishing my ice cream and dump the wrapper in the nearest trash can we passed. Hay naku, pagbigyan mo na nga yan si Leia, Trixie. Di yan titigil, alam mo yun? Inirapan din ni Maxine si Leia. Maxine and I knew... That thing already. It was our school fair and Leia was completely enjoying it. On the other hand, I didn't like it because of the fact na madaming tao. I wasn't really comfortable with crowds. I think I have claustrophobia pag madaming tao. Or maybe social anxiety? Anong tamang term ba doon? Siguro tama na yung social anxiety. Anyway, thank God the school fair was only for the three-day weekend. And it wasn't mandatory. I only came because my two best friends, Leia and Maxine, insisted. It was our last year in high school, so we agreed to enjoy everything together before we go our separate ways for college. We got accepted to different universities. In three months, we'll be graduating and not long after, starting with our new life and away from each other. I wasn't actually prepared to be away from these two, so I tried not to think about it too much. Fine, I finally agreed and Leia excitedly dragged Maxine and I sa direksyon ng tent. Maximo, Maxine, Francisco, and myself, Trixie Margaret, have been best friends since grade 4 when we became classmates and were totally inseparable since. I'm pretty bummed that we'll be away from each other during college. We had planned to attend the same college when we were kids, but of course, not all plans fall through. I got accepted in a state university in Manila to take up political science. While Leia naman got accepted sa isang college sa Alabang where she lives to take up legal management. The two of us wanted to be lawyers someday. I'm really not sure why. It just sounded so respectable, I guess. Well, si Maxine is set to go to film school to pursue his passion in making and directing movies. I tried to shake away from my feelings of separation anxiety from my two best friends. I don't want to be too mopey since the two were enjoying this kind of day. What Leia wanted to try was the fortune teller tent. I profusely refused to go because I didn't see the point. I didn't believe in those kind of things. Too unrealistic for me. I believe that it's our choice that leads us to where we are and where we'll be. Not some fate or unknown divine force. Another reason why I refuse is I don't want anyone na hindi ko kilala to touch me. I hope walang palm reading na mangyayari dito. We entered the tent and my eyes adjusted sa dilim. Wow, taray ng ambience. Max whispered to us and we looked around the tent. I thought it actually looked bigger sa loob than how it looked like sa labas. And malamig din considering that it was a little hot outside. In, in fairness nga, the fortune teller outdid herself in all the decorations. It was like a movie set. Welcome, bati ng mahuhula na nakaupo sa gitna at nakaharap sa kristal. Nakapatong sa mesa. Super cliche but I guess talagang ganun ba? She had to make it look legit. Magpapahula po. Leia said, Duh, ano pang gagawin namin dito? I frowned and natawa ng konti si Max. Siniko ko siya, pati na si Leia. Okay, tickets. The fortune teller asked and the three of us took out the tickets that we bought at the school entrance to be able to do rides, enjoy the games and tents and handed her one each. 
our school usually goes all out pag may mga events na ganito. Carnival rides were thrown all over the campus ground as well as games, tents, and food booths. Our rather massive school was transformed into a main enchanted kingdom. I wonder if ganito din ba sa college? Siguro hindi. They probably don't have fairs in college. Maybe I will indeed miss this. The fortune teller gestured in the free seat in front of her. Okay, sino sa amin ang mauuna? Definitely not me. Tinulak ni Leia si Max paharap. Gaga to? Ako pang iuuna. Max turned around to glare at Leia. But he took his seat anyway. Leia and I look on from the side. I was secretly hoping na hindi talaga palm reading ang mangyayari. And hello, sayang naman yung bolang kristal niya kapag props lang. Well, everything is a prop here. But what do I know, right? We just waited for something to happen and magsalita na yung mahuhula for a full minute kasi we're all literally silent right now. Hindi ko alam kung normal ba yun or nag lang talaga kami ng pera dito. Siniko ka ako ni Leia, excitedly at ngumuso sa crystal ball in between the fortune teller and Max. Max turned around and tinaasan niya ng kami ng kilay, seemingly impressed. The crystal ball turned smoky and buti na lang hindi umilaw kasi that will be too theatrical. We all waited for the fortune teller to say something. The air of anticipation was kind of funny and too dramatic. In three years, magbabago ang takbo ng buhay mo. May babaeng darating at bibigyan ka na rason para iwan mo lahat. The fortune teller said, What the hell, babae? Kay Max, good luck. I couldn't control the small laugh that escaped my mouth and I felt another nudge from Leia. Pero hindi pa tapos yung mahuhula. Pag tinanggihan mo, mapapasaya mo ang mga magulang mo. Pero pag tinanggap mo, ikaw ang magiging masaya at makukuha mo lahat ng gusto mo. Tinapos nito. Mother, bakla po ako. Max told her. I just silently sniggered, baka masiko na naman ako ni Leia, who was really feeling this way too much. The fortune teller just shrugged and nanahimik ulit. Tapos na po ako? Max asked dahil the three of us were unsure and tumungo lang ang manghuhula. Leia excitedly took her place sa upuan, pagtayo ni Max at tumabi naman si Max sa akin. That was so weird. Max breathed silently and I slowly nodded. Definitely. And yung manghuhula din. Hindi mo alam kung tamad or talagang ganun lang siya. Will it make her look mysterious? Pagupo ni Leia, the crystal ball turned smoky again after a few seconds of waiting. At tahimik pa rin yung manghuhula. After a minute, nagsalita na siya. Magkakaroon ka ng anak sa paraang hindi mo pinili at sa panahong biglaan. I felt my cheeks with air para di talaga ako matawa. Girl, sabi sa'yo, mabubuntis yan agad. Max whispered to me and I tried to hold back a chuckle. Pumikit ako at tumingala kasi sobrang natatawa na ako. We both knew Leia was always hopeless romantic type. She dreamed of having the perfect family in the future. Kaya sobrang magiging unexpected talaga kung mabubuntis siya. And sa totoo lang, wala yun sa ugali ni Leia. Kaya nakakatawa yung hula sa kanya. Hmm, yun lang po. Walang choices? Leia asked the fortune teller, looking annoyed. I'm pretty sure she's expecting a certain outcome. Like kay Yaman siya, nakakapangasawa ng gwapo, and all those bullshit things that people want to hear. Meron, pero hindi ko nakikita kung gaano at anong mangyayari. Sinagot siya na mahuhula at clearly mukhang di masyadong nagustuhan ni Leia yung hula sa kanya. Naisip niya din na yung hula sa kanya ay mukhang maaga siyang mabubuntis. Nakakunot ang noo ni Leia na tumayo sa upuan at hinila niya yung upuan para umupo ako sa tapat ng mahuhula. I sat down awkwardly kasi nakatitig lang sa akin yung mahuhula. As usual, not saying anything. The crystal ball turned smoky again. Paano niya kaya ginagawa yun? I frowned. Gusto kong silipin yung ilalim ng mesa para makita kung may tinatakpan ba yung babae para sa special effects. Kian Romero, biglang sinabi na mahuhula. What? Did she just say I'm going to kill someone? What? I asked her kasi di ko talaga masyadong narinig. The fortune teller stared right at me as if annoyed and repeated slowly. Kian Romero, okay? So it's a name. I waited for more. A bit in much? Um, yun na po yun. Di napigilan ni Leia at siya na nagtanong ng iniisip ko rin. And the fortune teller just nodded. Again, hindi talaga masyadong madaldal tong mahuhulang to. Super weird. Thanks, I guess. 
I awkwardly said as I stood up to leave. Hintayin mo siya. Pahabol na mahuhula before I can turn to leave. Yeah, whatever. He might not even exist. Well, that was weird. Max said loudly echoing what he already said to me as soon as we were outside the tent. Yeah, like hell. Mabubuntis ba ako ng maaga? Leia was starting to get hysterically and natawa kami ni Max sa kanya. So Leia, yung reaction niya over. Hindi nakakatawa guys. My dad will murder me. She continued while stomping as we walked away from the tent. Hoy Leia, huwag kang ang exage. Max continued laughingly loudly. Yeah, saka hindi naman totoo yun no, I pointed. True, like hell would I choose a girl. Max said then nandiri siya while looking at us, making a face. Finally, natawa din si Leia. Just admit it, Lay. It's not true. I smiled at Leia who went back to frowning. Yeah, I guess. She finally agreed reluctantly. Alam nyo, medyo baskil yung ginawa natin so let's just use up our remaining tickets for rides. Max took both Leia's and my hand and pulled us over towards the rides. And for once, I was happy I'm here. Oh my God, do you think Max, ikaw yung makakabundis kay Leia? I joked looking at them. Ew, gosh. My two best friends said in unison and Max rebuffed from Leia and she did the same. I laughed out loud at their facial expressions and Max moved to my other side para nasa gitna ako. Diring-diri ka naman ha? Lugi ka pa. Leia said ng pagalit kay Max with matching kurot sa braso. Te, hindi yun sa lugihan. Bakla ako, bakla. Naintindihan mo yun? Sinabunutan ni Max si Leia at naipit ako sa gitna nila. But we all laughed. I knew I shouldn't worry too much about being away from these two. Kahit maghihiwalay kami, we will always stay best friends. We all knew that. And note, fortune teller needed to predict that for us. Oh my God, nakita mo ba yung reading last ni Ator ni Abela? Baka isang buong taon kong kailangan basahin yun. Reklamo ni Lea as soon as nakahanap kami ng empty na spot sa library. Binagsak ni Lea yung bag niya at notebook sa ibabaw ng mesa at pabagsak din siyang umupo. Walang pakundangan sa ibang nagbabasa sa library. I sat down across her. Welcome to third year in law school, Miss Cruz. I smiled at her sarcastically as I also scanned the list of cases na binigay ng prof namin earlier. Ha, uh, Leanne's right. I opened the button so naroon sa white long sleeve girly dress skirt with a discreet white long bow ribbon around my neck that I partnered with my slim gray slacks while still scanning our case list. Pasimple ko ding tinanggal yung paa ko sa black heels ko. Ngayon na lang ulit ako nagsuot ng heels. Mga ilang months din nagpahinga yung paa ko and now, sumasakit na siya. Isang klase pa. I told my feet silently. I should have worn flats na lang. Nabigla tuloy ako sa heels. Well, kailangan na natin magsimula. As if my choice tayo. Papa photocopy pa ba? Leia stood up and exhaled. I took out my wallet and gave her money and she walked away to photocopy our list of cases. I think it was a mistake. I reviewed the case list again. I shouldn't have just searched for those cases online. Oh well. I took out my phone and checked my Instagram and there's a new IG story from Max. It was from a shoot location and a new film she's doing. I quickly type a comment, can't wait to watch it direct. Coffee soon, pag di ka busy. We miss you. Leia got back soon after. Later, 4pm pa daw natin makukuha. Lunch muna tayo before our class. I'm sure, nakakadari na naman yung energy. Aya niya. And she's probably right. Kahit first day pa lang ng term, I could almost see kung anong mangyayari sa amin for the rest of the sem. Law school was hard. And get even harder as we progressed. We'd think na masasanay din kami, but classes got more rigorous and we started to experience all the terror professors and the upper class men usually rented about. Although Leia and I got bit taste of what we might be facing in law school from our pre-law courses, that was exactly it. Just a bit. The only consolation we had was magkasama kaming dalawa dito. Magkasama kaming miserable. Masokista na yata kami. We spent most of our days for two years studying and we almost never had any social life aside from a few that involved drinking with some of our law school friends and blackmates. Also except during term breaks and a couple of weekends that we got to see, see Max 
if hindi din siya busy sa shoots or writing. And now, we're in the third year. I was growing anxious. I never excelled in my undergrad years and even in high school. I was the type na tres, okay lang na. Pasang awa, okay na. I even had to repeat a couple of subjects in college. Leia had to wait for me to graduate one semester later before we applied and took exams in law school. In law school, I was definitely different. I got a little more grade conscious. Lalo na dun sa mga subjects that I enjoyed. Probably because of the maturity that I had no choice but develop here. Or the larger tuition fee compared to my state-run pre-law university. Nahiya naman ako ng konti sa parents ko if ngayon pa ako maglolo ko. When we were in college, Max dropped out of film school during our junior year for a very good opportunity na hindi niya malapang lagpas. We was offered to be a part of a growing indie film company kung saan siya nag-submit na screenplay for a competition. It won and when the offer was made to show it sa isang film festival, he decided to drop out and do it full time. Yun lang, mga two years din silang hindi nag-usap ng magulang niya. But when they saw that he was getting more successful and happy with what he was doing, they began to mend their relationship. After lunch, Leia and I found our classroom for the next subject and we entered. We used to have our blackmates with us. But as term after term progress, pabawas ng pabawas na kami. That's another scary probability I didn't want to face. Trixie? Pinapatanong pala ni dad if go ka pa rin daw to intern sa law office nila. Leia asked me when we took their seat on the empty ones along the aisle. I'll think about it, Leia. And ang hirap ng Manila to alabang everyday eh. Hindi ko pa naayos yung sked ko this term for it. I suddenly remembered, shoot, we needed nga pala to finish 250 hours of apprenticeship this school year, which I stupidly forgot to enroll this term. Okay lang, may next semester pa naman. Or I can ask him if he can also just give you cases to review and other assignments to take home like what I'm doing. He can just give you the evaluation next term when you enroll it, Leia suggested. I sighed. No, okay lang. And besides, ang tanga ko, I forgot to enroll it. Fine, if you insist on getting the whole experience, Leia rolled her eyes at me. She didn't understand why I wanted to do the internship the harder way when she can easily ask her dad to fix it for me. A lot of our schoolmates did their apprenticeship either in their family law firms or through connections. I've already tried explaining to Leia why I wanted to experience doing mine for another law firm. Leia's dad was a lawyer so she was already used to what lawyers do since sinasama siya palagi ng tatay niya sa office nung bata pa siya. This was the reason why she wanted to attend law school, to work alongside her dad. Almost of our all friends from law school have lawyer dads or moms or kuyas and ates or even came from a whole family of lawyers. While I never had any family member or even a member of family friends who's a lawyer, no, no one, there's no show me anything related to what I'll be getting myself into when I pass the bar. I was hoping to get all the knowledge and experience I need during the apprenticeship. Oh my God, nakita mo story ni Bakla? May bago na naman siyang ginagawang movie. Di na naman siya makikita. Leia, let go of our earlier discussion and was now scanning her IG while waiting for the professor. Yeah, I replied na kanina. Sabi ko, coffee soon. I dismissively answered. Even if I'm not sure if we could really meet Max for a coffee. If we wanted to see Max, we would just FaceTime him. And in fairness to him, he always made sure to answer us. Nasa shoot man or kung nasaan siya. Minsan virtual kapihan na lang ginagawa namin. As if makikita talaga tayo in person. Nakalimutan na lang tayo with all the famous artistas surrounding him. Leia said bitterly but smiled as she typed her reply, echoing my exact thoughts. I started scanning my IG feeds as well. Social media for law student was just to pass time. While waiting for late professors or pwedeng ako lang yun. I barely post anything social. I post books and cases. I read my coffee and coffee I drink while reading the books and cases. Which was pathetic. My IG was evidence of my existent social life. Ang tagal naman ng prof na to. I was starting to get bored. Professors were known to skip the first day of classes and just ask someone from admin office 
to give out the course outline in case assignments. Siniko ako bigla ni Leia, who quickly hid her phone when our professor finally entered the room. Girl, ang guapo ni attorney. Leia added in a whisper as I looked up to meet the eyes of our professor, who looked at me for a few seconds, then scanned the whole class as soon as he sat down. Medyo natulala ako sandali. Guapo was certainly a word for it, or we needed something much more than that to this person in front of any justice. He looks way younger than any professors we never had. He had deep set eyes and chiseled jaw, and a probably near perfect nose to match the jaw. I couldn't decide what feature was more beautiful, probably in his eyes. He was dressed impeccably too. Light blue long sleeve polo, which was pulled up to his elbow, the kind na medyo gusot, mayaman, that you know that. If sinasadyang gusot or what, with black slacks that hugged in all the right places and shiny black shoes. Who cares about the shoes? Really? If he didn't have the same air as other law professors have, I would think he doesn't belong here. He was too young and too good-looking. And mukha din mabango. I looked around and saw our other female classmates giggling at the new professor. Mukhang bago din siya since we have certainly not seen him around. Maybe he just passed the bar. But new lawyers don't really teach review classes. Baka matalino or matanda na but only looks young. Good afternoon class. This is Civil Law Review. One, we'll just have attendance and I'll give you the outline and case list to photocopy. Our professor casually said with a cool deep voice that was so engaging. Parang kumakanta yung mga anghel habang nagsasalita siya. Ano ba tong taong to? Perfect. He took out the class cards and unbound them from the rubber band and started calling out names. After the attendance, he asked for a class biddle, like a class president. All of the girls' hands in class quickly shot up kasama ng mga ibang bakla and mga bidang-bidang lalaki. Except for mine, I never wanted to be a biddle since it was too much work and because it required social interaction. Leia was even raising two hands, so siniko ko siya out of the embarrassment and she dropped the other arm. Girl, itaas mo yung kamay mo. Leia sternly whispered to me, No thanks. I rolled my eyes. Our professor stared at the class amusedly with an arc eyebrow. I knew he wasn't surprised at their action. He probably had the same effect over and over from every class he teaches. I wonder if magtataas pa ba ng kamay yung mga klasiko pag nag-volunteer na for recitation. Why don't I just speak from the cards? He said, smiling. And bumaba yung mga kamay ng mga klase namin. Leia, though, was still raising her hand and I immediately reached it to pull it down. Nakakahiya ka na. I whispered. The professor shuffled the class cards and bumunot ng isa. Valdez, Trixie, Marga, he called. I almost groaned aloud and Leia pulled my hair from excitement and I rolled my eyes at her. Miss Valdez, the professor called again and scanned the room. Pwede ko ba tong tanggihan? So ngayon, walang gusto magtaas ng kamay. He chuckled. I slowly raised my hand a little, but I couldn't exactly hide the disappointment on my face. Tinaasan ko ng kilay ang prof, not letting go of the amused expression on his face. Ano yun? Mas lalong napakunot yung noo ko. What is so amusing with my misery? Okay, medyo OA yung misery, but a little bit close. It's almost always the unwilling volunteer. He almost said it to himself, pero narinig ko siya. He seems to be enjoying this. Ms. Valdez, I'll be needing the list of the everyone's email addresses by our next meeting. He directly eyed me and I can only nod. Here's the course outline in case list. I wasn't sure if I should stand up, but I did anyway because he was holding it up for me and tinitigan pa rin niya ako. Nahihiya pa ako. I guess that's it. Class dismissed. He smiled and almost had a mini heart attack from his dazzling smile when he looked at me directly. Nakatayo lang ako doon mukhang tanga. Buti na lang, hindi ako nakanganga. He started to get up and address the class. Oh, by the way, I'm Atty. Romero. I'll see you next meeting and prepare for a recitation. Coverage the first part of the outline and might include the first part of the family code. Then he left. Recovering after he was out of the room, I got the attention of the whole class then passed a yellow pad page for the class to put in their email addresses and numbers. For me in case, I needed to text them if walang class or for whatever. 
uh, I hate being the middle. Ang guapo. Hindi ko alam paano ako mabubuhay sa klase na to. Baka ibags ako. Well, okay lang kung siya pa rin yung prof. And oh my God, ikaw yung bedal at ayaw mo pa. Leia stood up and got her books and I followed her as soon as I got back the yellow pad. I had to type this. Naisip ko as I found at some of my classmates. Horrendous penmanship. Wait, kailangan ko tong iwan sa photocopy center. And check na din natin if available na yung political law. I waved the outline in case list which I almost forgot. I left the outline in case list after photocopying it for Leia and myself with a post it labeled Civic Review 1, Attorney Romero for the staff to identify and we got our polyrev cases. I groaned. Ang dami nga nung cases and they were all long. Yung iba pa halos kumakalas na sa stapler wire. I frowned at it. Gusto ko na agad sindihan sa sama ng loob. I should have segregated the cases I've already read during our political law subjects. Sobrang waste of money. I decided to search na lang the Civil Law Review 1 cases sa internet while Leia wanted to have the photocopied version. She doesn't like reading from her laptop. And she didn't care much if double-double na yung mga kaso na napapapotocopy niya. I waited for Leia sa gilid while scanning my own. Of course, yung copy from Attorney Romero. Thinking kung paano ko pa ipagkakasya yung ibang mga kaso sa oras ko. Not to mention, we will still have tax law to evidence and criminal procedure. When I got the last page, my eyes bog. Oh my God. I said rather loudly and I froze. There, though written in small font, the name screamed at me. Attorney Kian De Leon Romero. Ngayon nakilala niya na misteryosong lalaki na tila nagpabalik ng kaunting alaala sa kanya. Ano nga ba ang mabubuong relasyon sa pagitan nilang dalawa? Yan ang ating patuloy na aabangan sa mga paparating pang bahagi ng ating kwento. Shout out muli sa lahat nating masugid na taga-subaybay. Maraming maraming salamat po sa patuloy na pagsama sa amin sa kwentong ito. Hanggang sa muli, mag-ingat po tayong lahat.